What's up guys? Thanks so much for clicking on the video. My name is Leah and let's recap and review Real Housewives of Potomac. This is season nine, episode two. And girl, Karen, <laughs> why would you do this? <laughs> why you got the people siding with Giselle? Because you were wrong. <laughs> really wrong. <laughs> but let's get into it. So y'all know sometimes before we get into it, we get a little spicy, just a little bit over here. And I just want to talk about a few things that caught my eye while I was, you know, doom scrolling down the timeline, okay? So first up, um, Wendy. So we all know Wendy has her talk show that's on YouTube. I'm going to be honest, I, I, I'm not interested in it, but for the people who are, you know, um, she posted a video and a caption that I guess today, which would be the 14th, that she is back with the Wendy show. So it says we are back season two of at the Dr. Wendy show premieres on October the 14th, 4 p.m. on YouTube. Thank you to press secretary K underscore Jean Pierre and at just hilarious underscore official for kicking off season two. Can't wait for you all to see all of our amazing guests we are are so back hashtag dr wendy show hashtag rhop and then mia was actually in the comments saying yes congratulations so it seems like mia and wendy's friendship is actually going strong which honestly i mean wendy be forgiving the girls real quick i would have made me a grovel after hitting me with her purse and trying to throw a drink on me but hey if you're into her show definitely go check out her youtube channel so since I mentioned Mia, let's let's get to Mia. So when I tell you Mia has her foot on Karen's neck, so on October the 8th, she did an interview with Ricky Cornish and they talked about Karen. So let me play that clip of Mia talking about Karen. Do you think Karen is Potomac? Oh, darling. You know, when I heard her say that, I legit was so unbothered. I was like, oh, okay. So you really, the, the grand dame, you know, you really set the stage here. The bar's so high. I mean, who can't get a DUI? <laughs> I think we all are capable of that. <laughs> so I guess we're all Potomac. She has the mugshot, not me. So maybe that's the criteria. Now, Karen had just said in a recent interview that there is an, apparently a very tense moment with a couple yeah. of ladies this season that has not been teased yet. We haven't seen it in any of the trailers. Mia, when I say that out loud, what even comes to your mind? What could she be alluding to? <laughs> I mean, the tensest moment was her swinging around the tree for heaven's sake, so she was talking about herself. <laughs> I'm like, what moment? You and the deer or like, <laughs> you know, like that was the most excitement that I remember. <laughs> So when I saw this clip, I said, oh, Mia not playing with Karen. <laughs> and I can't really fault her because Karen's saying that Mia is not Potomac. It's the same thing she said about Wendy not fitting the look of Potomac. It's like, who are you to say who is Potomac and who is not? Especially dealing with the situation you have now of having two DUIs, you hitting a tree, running into the grass. You really shouldn't be making these types of statements. And then I kind of find a little, I take issue, well, I won't say issue. I find a little cap in Mia's statement where she, where Ricky was like, so Karen alluded to this intense moment and Mia is trying to act like Karen doesn't know what she's talking about, which makes me feel like either A, the situation happened between Mia and somebody, or B, Mia is protecting one of the people who it involves, which it could have been Jacqueline, or it could have been Jazzy. Because in my mind, Wendy also brought this up as well, and we don't know Wendy to be a liar, but we know Mia lies, and we know Karen it likes to like play in reality and, and delusions. So I feel like a situation did happen, but it might either involve Mia or one of her little friends of the show but continuing with Mia on the day of the of the episode she posted this clip of herself where she said hire housewives 101 hire a driver when you're going out to grab drinks and I said oh girl not a shot at Karen again and then well let me play the clip for you before I read the comments so this is what you do when you're gonna go out and you're gonna do some drinking Go out and you're gonna do some drinking. You hire a driver. 
So that was Mia's video that she posted. In the caption she posted this, she said, it's proper etiquette to drink responsibly, loves. Hashtag R-H-O-P, hashtag so Potomac. Then Jacqueline got in the comments saying, I agree with this message. Says a little friend of, with no DUI past or present cases. And then Mia responded by saying, LOL, hey friend, let me know who got their ish together. For real, for real. Hashtag no citations crew and then she kept going because someone said coming for karen wrong move botox and then uh, mia responded saying botox doesn't move just saying and then another person saying now why are you being messy it's only the second episode and then mia responded to this person by saying i love karen regardless just a little kind reminder so Mia says she ready for whatever Karen got for her because making statements and videos like this online lets me know that her and Karen probably are about to get into it this season. Now, now that we, you know, we got Mia out the way, let's talk about her friend of that she brought back to the show. So Jacqueline is really feeling herself right about now. I don't know who told her, but this also makes me feel like the big situation that was alluded to by Karen and, um, and Wendy has something to do with Jacqueline. I, I I feel like it does because this is what Jacqueline had to say. And this was posted last, um, well, actually on Sunday. She says, they're big mad because I've never needed a title to shine, especially not one that's never guaranteed. Just naturally being me, no chaser. Make sure you tune into all new episodes of RHOP at 8 p.m. tonight at Bravo TV, where I am supporting Giselle Bryant, Ashley Darby's GNA event, where they are supporting National Brain Tumor Society. Wouldn't miss it for the world. I don't know why she had to tell us this, but this makes me feel like, girl, someone that made her hair big. Because <laughs> who was Jacqueline? Who is Jacqueline? Nobody was clamoring for Jacqueline to come back. I mean, when we found out she was coming back, it was like, oh, okay, cool. But I don't know. She feeling very empowered. But let's get into this review. All right, y'all. So let's talk about it. So the episode opens up and it's right where we're le left off at the Hattitude party. Mia having a fake breakdown in the bathroom because when the camera crew finally gets in there with her, Jazzy, and Jacqueline, they had um, the camera, it was like at an angle. So you could see Mia's face in the mirror, no tears. The eyes weren't even red. All that, oh, I'm a good mother. Girl, you did all of that for nothing. Jacqueline is trying to encourage Mia saying, don't allow them to make you feel bad as a parent. You're a really good mother. And then Mia's in her confessional being like, that's very low of them to say that to me. She was like, because my kids are good. She also goes on to say, this is what Karen does. She deflects and this is what we have. But I can't believe she went there with me like this. So while Mia's trying to get herself together in the bathroom, you have... Um, Wendy at the table basically saying like, y'all don't think y'all went a little too far. Like at the end of the day, we're all mothers and it's kind of feels like y'all are attacking her as a mother. And Giselle is like, no, that's not what we were doing. And Karen was like, no, that's not, that's definitely not, not what we were trying to do. But Giselle ends up being like, but we have to call a thing a thing. When Gordon went on TMZ, you could clearly tell that he was pissed and he was mad. And it was because there was overlapping in the relationship. Then they do the flashback to where Gordon was like, Jeremiah. Maya came up to me saying that he saw mommy in bed with ink and to be honest Mia that's a bad look on you I'm not saying Mia has to stay in a relationship where she is not feeling safe or feeling uh, respected or she she just wants to move on from it but what I am saying is like you as a parent have a responsibility to make sure that your breakup is not that messy like there was definitely a way that you and Gordon could have separated you got your own apartment y'all figured out like a co-parenting situation and then when them kids wasn't there you and Ink messing around but the fact that even in the episode one we see that you taking family trips with him that's a bit much because is he going to stay around? Like, how long is Ink going to be in your life, Mia? Because you was over there last episode talking about you got sneaky links. What an S. Not a sneaky link, a sneaky links. So is there other men waiting in the ring for you? And if that, if that, if you have that, are you going to be smarter about the way you move? Because the way you move in is very sloppy. It's very sloppy. And right now your kids might be okay. But when they get older, they'll probably have the 
emotional intelligence to actually like vocalize to you what they didn't like about this situation. Because I do think it's very telling that your oldest son is nowhere to be found. I remember when you first got on the screen, we saw him. We even went to like, I think like a basketball game, like Robin and her kids were there and your son was there. Now he's probably like either in high school or maybe going to middle school or something or like in like eighth grade, probably going to middle, not going to high school. He's old enough to like know what's happening around him. And he probably basically say he don't want no parts of it because he don't want his face on TV. Like, come on now. So they decide to proceed with the event, you know, and Wendy says in her confessional, she don't understand the Bermuda Triangle that Mia got going on. So it is what it is. Um, Giselle ends up getting Wendy a bucket hat. Honestly, I thought the bucket hat and Karen's hat were my favorite. So I would have been okay with a bucket hat. I definitely wouldn't want a derby hat. And I don't know. I may might want a cowboy hat because, you know, some of the cowboy girl outfits I've been seeing on Pinterest have actually been cute. So let me switch it. I would have took Ashley's hat and I would have took Wendy's hat because I feel like you can get more outfits out of those hats than the other ones. Cause like a derby hat, Kentucky Derby like Karen's hat I feel like it's only a hat you would see somebody like wear in like the fall or the winter and then Giselle's hat just gave me church <laughs> yeah you know very first lady ish so they're still passing out the but Wendy got a bucket hat because Giselle said their relationship is in the bucket she then asked Wendy hey would you like to go you know, have a, like, you know, sit down and have a conversation with me so we can hash things out. And Wendy, um, complies to it. So Giselle gives herself a hat. It's called the queen. Then we end up seeing Mia and Jacqueline and Jazzy come back. It's very awkward silence. And then Giselle apologizes to Mia being like, I didn't mean to make you cry. That was not my, my cake. Like that was not what I was trying to do. And then Karen ends up being like, yeah, like I've been around you with your kids. I know you love and adore your kids. I didn't mean it that way. So, um, Mia kind of takes the apology, but she's kind of like over the whole entire situation. That's when Karen, not Karen, but Giselle ends up passing out, um, for the other ladies, the, the derby hat. Jacqueline is like, I should have always had a hat cause I should have never, never left the group. But then I'm kind of like, well, Mia's the reason why you weren't around because you were not friends with anybody else. You got introduced to us on season seven as Mia's friend. Okay, girl, remember I called you the evil stepsisters the way y'all was standing on top of them stairs when you were looking down at the other girls for being cool with Wendy after that whole fight in Miami. Like, so you falling out with Mia was the reason why you weren't on this show. So this whole energy of like, I always should have been around. Who were you else were you connected to, Jacqueline? Nobody. But before I move on, what I will say is, I don't think Mia should get all the flag because Gordon should get some too. Because at the end of the day, what's happening to Gordon is what he did to his ex-wife. Like Gordon and Mia were very boastful about how they got together, how, you know, they was having sex on the beach and he was still married to his second wife. So basically the universe is just doing a, a getting, giving you get back. And it's just, a, it, sometimes when you get, get back, it comes at the most inconvenient time or inconvenient. Is it inconvenient? No, I think it's inconvenient. Ooh, girl, making up words. Inconvenient time. So they end up ending the Hattitude party. Everybody seems to be okay. They take a picture. And Karen says she thought the party was all right, pretty much. It is of Giselle and Wendy finally having a conversation. Honestly, they both looked like they was going to two different places. Wendy looked like she was about to go to Latin night. Because all I could think about is, um, I don't know what they call them, but the men and I think that's normally men that have like the really big poofy shoulders and they have the maracas and be dancing. That's what Wendy's outfit reminded me of. And Giselle looked like she was going to a parent teacher conference. I was like, two totally different events, but they sit down. It's awkward. You could tell that Giselle kind of doesn't want to be there, but she knows she has to have this conversation. Wendy seems like she's a little optimistic, but yet defensive as well. Giselle is asking her about like her outfit. Like, what is this? And why, why the feathers? Does that mean you flying away? And you know, Wendy's like, no, this means I'm open to like whatever for right now. And you got Wendy in the confessional being like, who would have thought me and Giselle would have ever sat down the same Giselle that told me back in 2022, she didn't want me to touch her. 
which is true. And they show a flashback. So then Giselle ends up saying that she wants to give Wendy an opportunity to like speak her piece because she feels like when you don't talk about things, people make their own assumptions about the other person and things start to fester, which is Giselle's fault. Because I promise you, Wendy wanted to have a conversation with you back in 2022, which would have been season seven. So y'all could open up the season in a different light, but you ain't want to do that. So you allowed it to fester, ma'am. So um, Giselle ends up saying that when Wendy is good, she's good. And when she's not, she's not. And when she gets into it with people, she gets very de- condescending. Wendy's rebuttal to that, she said, even though I, she was like, I received that is, I don't get that way until y'all come knocking at my door. Okay. Until y'all like, and why are we trying to police my response to when y'all attack me? And so Giselle's like, I'm not trying to police your response. They then do a flashback to 2021, which would have been season six, where Giselle ended up, um, Giselle and Robin and Ashley, because we were forgetting about Ashley and Ashley brought up that blog and that YouTube page that was putting out them rumors saying that Wendy's family was cursed or she came from a cursed bloodline. That's why Eddie's family family doesn't fool with her as well as saying that you know and Wendy not Wendy but Eddie liked a whole bunch of like booty model or IG like model girls with big booties that's why Wendy got the mommy makeover and pretty much insinuating that Eddie was out here cheating on Wendy and Wendy was trying to compete and Giselle and Robin brought those things up and then Wendy rightfully cussed Giselle out and I think that is that not think that's where this all started and The thing about Giselle that's off-putting is, I get Giselle's doing her job. She's ghost producing. She's causing issues. She's causing arguments. But she can never take how nasty somebody's rebuttal is to the things that she starts. Like, what did you expect Wendy to say to you? Like, did you think she was going to be like, oh, thank you for telling me this? She looked at you like, girl, me and you are cool. Like, why would you even bring this up to me? And I don't think Giselle was ready for Wendy to say your life is shitty and it's because of your nasty behavior and you deserve all of it. Just like I don't think she expected Candace's response to her to be what it was when she brought up the whole Chris thing. And then when she couldn't handle the person's response, all of a sudden you want to ice them out. You want to isolate these people. and You don't want to be cool with them. But you started. And that's the part that doesn't make sense to me. You start things with people and then you're not prepared for what they're going to give you back then why start anything to begin with if you can't handle the rebuttal? That doesn't make sense to me. And so Giselle's like, no, I'm not trying to police your response. I'm not. So then Wendy says, since you don't like that, I'm condescending. I don't like how when you don't like people, you start to isolate them. And they show a flashback to last season when Wendy and Eddie had the Happy Eddie event and Giselle just walked into the party, didn't even say anything to Wendy and Wendy was like, how are you going to walk into my party and not even greet me? And so Giselle's response to that was like, when I don't like somebody, I don't want to talk to them. So she did, she didn't really like own what she did that, or said, like she didn't own that what she was doing was, was messed up because just cause you don't like them, you feel it's like, okay for you to isolate them off the cast because you feel like, or you know that you might have a type of power far greater than theirs because of your position in the show. That's messed up. And so they kind of stop there with their conversation, which makes me feel like the conversation went a lot longer because I was looking at the table and when they first started off, there was nothing on the table. Then they got oysters. And by the end of the conversation, there was nothing on the plates. And I'm like, it takes a minute for you to eat uh, oysters. And I'm just like, this conversation had to be longer than this. So then Wendy got online because shouts out to the Brooke Ashley. She posted this on Twitter. The Brooke Ashley says, I'm all for moving on and forgiving, but we have to, um, we have to have some tough conversations and get to the root. Um, Wendy let her off way too easy and didn't bring up anything. This is crazy. Hashtag R H O P. So then Wendy quote tweeted the Brooke Ashley by saying this, no baby. I brought up everything saying I could not use the bathroom at the reasonably shady event saying it was okay for me to be assaulted because she does not like me bringing up the fake rumors about my husband and talking badly about my mother and etc it was a two-hour lunch and I believe that because by the time they started talking about ink and Mia it was like there was more plates on the table so I'm like why would y'all not show us everything 
Like, that doesn't make sense to me. And like someone said online, watch when we get to the reunion, they going to show a flashback to them actually having a more in-depth conversation. I don't understand what this production team is trying to do or trying to prove. We all kind of know that it seems like they project Giselle, but I'm like, this would have been way better if y'all just would have showcased everything. Even if it made Giselle look bad or made Wendy look bad, this was a conversation that people were waiting to see happen and to not give the full context of what they were talking about. I think is lame as hell. So they continue, like I said, they talk about Mia and Ing. Wendy brings up that she feels like y'all really hurt Mia. Like, I think you really hurt her. And Giselle was like, that's not my intention. But honestly, I think that whole mess she got going over there is sloppy. And it is. So I can't fault Giselle when it comes to that. Um, they leave the conversation where Giselle says, you know, maybe Wendy and I might be besties. Like, I never thought that I would say that. And then Wendy's like, we ain't besties. But we moving in the right direction. I'm going to just do all her scenes together. Together. So we go to her house. We see her daughter. Is it Arabella or Arabella? I think it's Arabella. But we see her with her daughter. I think the girl is like eight years old or maybe nine years old. And then we see her with her au pair. I had to Google what that was. I thought that was like German for nanny or something else. Or maybe that was like a cousin. I don't know. But what I Googled said the difference between a nanny and an au pair is that a nanny is a standard employee that gets paid a salary. A au pair is someone that integrates into your family as a temporary family member and you pay them, but it's like you set the salary pretty much. They receive like po monthly pocketed money instead of a salary. They also get a room and board and food in your house. They like eat meals and everything with you. So pretty much kind of like a cousin, I guess, <laughs> that does child care. I don't know. So we find out that the little girl knows like three different languages. So German, English, and Spanish. Um, Stacy and uh, is originally from Detroit. I told y'all she looked like Kenya, but season five Kenya to me. I think they need to check their family tree because they might be cousins, okay? Um, she met her husband. We learned that last episode. And they've been together for 16 years, but they're currently in the process of getting a divorce. They were living in Pennsylvania, but now they live in um live in dc they have two homes so stacy has an apartment where when her husband is at home she tries to make up an excuse to be like oh i gotta go do work and she goes to dc and then you know but they still share the house he just sleeps in a different room and she sleeps in a different room they haven't told their daughter that they're getting a divorce because they want to finalize everything before they tell her and i have mixed feelings about that because on one hand i'm like that might be the best thing because at least she wouldn't have to worry about about like who am I staying with who do I go with like where am I going to school but then on the other hand I'm just like are y'all gonna spring it on her because at the end of the day I don't think she's stupid if the little girl knows three different language at the age of like eight or nine I definitely feel like she knows what's going on in her house especially when her parents sleep in two different rooms I think she knows what's, what's up, you know, but I just feel like maybe you need to tell her so she can put input in on like how she wants to like proceed with like having two divorced parents. I don't really know. Um, they were asking her, did she know her parents phone number? Because the dad is taking her to Cancun for spring break. And the little girl knows three different languages, but cannot like, she does not have her parents phone number memorized. I feel like at that age, I knew both my parents phone numbers and I knew my address. Like, I feel like that was like drilled in my head. Like this is your mom and dad's phone numbers. This is where you live know it by heart so I feel like if she's smart enough to know all them languages she's smart enough to memorize them other stuff so y'all need to start telling her get with the program so we move on from that scene and then we have this scene of Ashley going to kick it with Stacy so they're going for a hike um as they're walking out the house Ashley brings up the whole thing about like oh do you have really nice grass like when do you cut it or like do you cut your grass and Stacy was like no I don't I don't know who the person come and cut my grass like I don't know that man and Ash was like oh I'm only asking because I cut my grass I said see that's a you you cut your grass Stacy don't gotta cut her grass she still got a husband living in the house with her <laughs> You know, and honestly, I feel like most people don't like if you live in an apartment, I know we had our like our grass cut like every other like day. I didn't know half the people. Honestly, I didn't know none of the people that came to cut the apartment like complexes grass. Like they would just come. I would say good morning. Hello to them and keep it pushing. 
I feel like most people don't know who cut their grass, especially if you sign up for like some type of program where they just send people out to cut your grass and then they leave. <laughs> like, like you might meet them once, but you don't know them like that, you know? So they're going hiking and, um, you know, Stacy lets Ashley know like, Hey, like my husband still lives here. And Ashley's like, are you serious? Are you serious? Then Ashley has the audacity to judge Stacy's situation. When I'm like, girl, just about a year ago, you were living in that concrete box y'all called an apartment with Michael while you were first, like, you know, when you first filed for separation. So what do you like, what do you mean? Cause Ashley is like, you know, when you're like living in the same house together, you feel together, but like y'all aren't together. I was like, that's a you thing. It seems like Stacy and her husband are moving on because Stacy let us know that like when her husband's at the house, she tries to be at her other like you know her DC apartment, and we find out she's seeing somebody else. Just like she says, she knows that for a fact that her ex husband is seeing somebody else. So it seems like they moving on. They roommates right about now. It's not the same thing, Ashley. So they're walking. Then Stacy lets it be known that she has somebody like she's been dating this guy, this guy named JT. We find out that JT was supposed to be working at QVC like Stacy. They became friends. They talked to each other for the past like six months and then they couldn't fight their feelings anymore. And they got together. Now I'm wondering, is that the, is that the main reason why Stacy let her job go? Because she started dating JT. Maybe they have like a clause in their contracts like you can't like you know fraternize with your employees because she definitely could have kept her QVC job and still been on Real Housewives of Potomac because we saw Lisa Renner do it all the time on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills like she would just fly down do her little commercials and then go back home (laughs) like so I'm just like why did you really quit QVC and then didn't she also work for the like she was the news anchor because um, Ashley brings up that's how she met Stacy because Stacy was working at one of the local um, news stations and she was making fun of how Stacy has the constant like news anchor voice and you can kind of tell she does like Stacy does not code switch she stays in one one format and um, Stacy lets Ashley know that her and the guy JT are celibate because JT is like a devout Christian and he does not want to like break his vow or his covenant with the lord and ash is like are you serious like you've had the same you know d-i-c-k for the past 16 years and you don't want to try any other d-i-c-k i said she don't have to now the only thing that i find that is like kind of like you know my antennas are up is that like this just seems like a rebound like you were in a marriage for 16 years and now you're about to jump into a relationship with somebody that you only known for like six months and you're saying that you love him and you want to marry him like it's giving very much like this is a rebound i hope she don't marry him or keep what keeps st- like this is their relationship kind of weird to me because i'm just like it's giving rebound. I'm just leaving it at that. It's giving rebound. So Stacy and Ashley continue to walk and they start having like this racial identity conversation where um, Stacy asks Ashley, how do you identify yourself uh, or how do you see yourself? And Ashley says, well, you know, my dad is white and my mom is black, but I identify myself as a black woman. And I say, okay, Ashley, <laughs> okay. Okay. And that's your choice. And so Stacy was like, what about your boys? How do they see themselves? Because, you know, I married a proud German man and you married a proud Australian. How do they see themselves? And Ashley was like, well, you know, it's kind of hard. It's something that I'm struggling with. You know, I read books to them and I try to educate them, but like, I don't know if they really see themselves as their other counterparts, which are little black boys. And she, she was like, but like, you know, I was blessed to be brought up around my black side of my family so I had that experience but they don't really have that experience basically Ashley don't either hang out with black people with black kids or she don't really hang out with black people like that in general okay enough for her kids to like understand that part of their like their like heritage and but she was like you know I'm educating them and reading books to them so then Stacy is like you know that's where I'm at with my daughter where you know she married I she was like I married a proud German man like my daughter is so proud to be German she speaks the language you know she loves her grandparents but like I want her to love her black side just as much and to be proud of it just as much and she said unfortunately like we don't get enough time to go back to like Detroit and be around my family and I'm saying well why haven't you sent your child to Detroit for like summer why aren't y'all going down there for like Thanksgiving 
or for Christmases or for Easter or like Mother's Day. Like, what's going on, Stacey? Because that kind of felt, not kind of, it felt like a cop-out. Because, ma'am, you live in D.C. You also lived in Pennsylvania. If you And this is a thing for both Ashley and Stacey. If you want your child to be exposed to that part of themselves or that part of their, their culture and that heritage, then you need to take the initiative and the time to do that, to showcase that to them. Like, girl, I, I told you, I grew up in the DMV. Girl, if you don't drop their, that daughter off at, at, at the Boys and Girls Club like my parents did me and my sister... Everybody go to the Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> like, and you're surrounded. When I mean legit, like the Boys and Girls Club I went to was every, we had Asian kids. It was black kids. It was Hispanic kids. It was white kids. We had um, other immigrant kids. It was like everybody. And then our camp counselors were black and Latin. So it's just kind of like if you want your child to have like a very like broad experience or like a, a multifaceted experience about culture in general, then put them in those types of spaces. If you want your child to be around black people to appreciate it, put your child in black experience. You cannot, you live in DC. You cannot act like there's not like something black going on every other weekend, even though, you know, it's called the chocolate city. I don't know if it's as chocolate as it used to be. Cause look at love is blind. Cause what was that? What? When I tell you the lineup for love is blind is horrible like I was expecting to see African men African women black women black men you know dropping them there like in my area there was a lot of El Salvadorian people I was looking for that you know maybe a few Mexican people like I would you know a, a couple of Koreans in there because like you act like Fairfax Anna Dell and Alexandria when I, I said what, what DC did y'all go to What, what DC did, I said, where is everybody at? And, he, and, and this is the other part. And the white men, y'all, because I said, there's some good looking white men in DC. And I said, and this is what y'all gave me. I, 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 you know what? I don't know who, I don't know what part of DC they went to. And then the, there's no accents either. I was ready to hear like a DC accent and a Baltimore accent. Ain't heard it. I said, all these people got to be transplants. They all have to be transplants because I said, I ain't, I, I ain't heard no, no deep acts. I said, I don't like this. I don't, I don't even think I saw somebody from Howard. I was disappointed. I was disappointed. I said, what is this? But we, we not there. We, we, let me get off of that. Finally see Kiarna. She pulls up to Karen's house and they embrace one another. She, I think she brought Karen like some, some cake or something. And they sit down. We find out that Kiarna and Karen have actually gotten pretty close together since what happened at the GNA event last um, season. And you know how Karen went and took on, like got in the ambulance with her, called Kiarna's mother and everything. And remember at the reunion, she thanked her and appreciated her for making sure she was okay we also find out that kiana has a boyfriend her name no not her name his name is greg they have moved in together because they're currently building a house together now karen is like girl y'all been in the house but you ain't got no ring and i said yeah i don't like after seeing all it takes to like purchase a home uh, i would not want to do all of that with somebody that i don't have like a commitment from that but i hopefully she um they have some type of contract because one of my, my closest friends, like one of like, that's my, my bestie. She and her man have a, have, like they're not married, but they have a contract and they, it's, it's very detailed about like, if they decide to break up, how they would divvy out what would happen to their home. So hopefully Kiarna and her man have that. We find out that unfortunately nine years ago, her fiance passed away. We don't know how he passed away. I saw a lot of people saying it's given that Kiana used to be a drug dealer's girlfriend. I don't know about that. I don't know about that, but, um, she's moving in with Greg and she really is into Greg. She's the, the whole, like my man, my man, my man type of energy. This black and red confessional, I think is the best out of everyone. She looks beautiful. Okay, the red and the black, I, she looks so pretty to me. That blonde, atrocious. I need y'all to stop putting 613 blonde in your hair, okay? Like, it doesn't look good on everybody. I feel like the only person that looks good with the three six, the 613 blonde is Karen. 
It, it is. Like, it washes everybody else out. Like, at least Giselle knows. Giselle always has blonde in her hair. But at least Giselle's blonde is honey blonde. We've seen Giselle have lighter hair. It's not cute on her. Darker hair looks better on Giselle. Even with Ashley. Th like, that blonde bob in her head. It's not cute. It should have been darker. And then we now we got Kiarna. Wh girl, what is this? What What is this? You too cute for that. And then the way the hair is cut is ugly. Like, it's like, I don't it, I, I don't know what it's called, but it's like, it's short on one side, long on the other. And it's not, I think it's like a bob just with a long back, but it's just, it's not, it's not it. It's not, and I hate it. I hate it, 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 I hate it. And I just want the girls to stop putting 613 in their heads. I just want them to, because I'm like, there's too many variations. You got ash blonde, wheat blonde, honey blonde. Okay. Strawberry. Okay. You even have like a, like a mauve type of blonde. Like there's so many co other color options. And like somebody said on Twitter, when the girls just be having 613 and they had, it just tells them, tells me they can't process. They don't got enough money to get their hair colored and processed. I said, that's what it's giving. And I don't like it. Fix it. Jesus fix it. So they're sitting down and Kiana is kind of upset because she finds out that she wasn't invited to the Hattitude party because Karen is like, I missed you at the Hattitude party. And Kiana's like, what Hattitude party? She was like, Giselle didn't invite you. And she said, no. Now I will say this. I feel like at this point in time, I don't know if Giselle knew that Kiana was officially a part of the cast or if Kiana was just a friend of, because I do know that Jazzy was supposed to be a full-time cast member, but then she got demoted to a friend of, and Kiana took her flute. So I don't know if Giselle is like, I don't know if I can make, like I if, if I need to pull all these strings for somebody who's just a friend of, but then you looked at, at Jacqueline being there, and I'm just kind of like, well, Jacqueline is a friend of, so why was she there? But, hey, Kiana kind of feels some type of way because she was like, everyone knows that me and Karen are so close. Girl, you just got here, Kiana. Y'all are not that close. Also, their relationship kind of mirrors Candace and Karen's relationship in the beginning, and we saw how that one went. I mean, it's better now. So I'm just like, if I was Kiana, I would watch Karen. I would. I really would. So Kiana was like, well, hopefully, you no, know, I think Karen is like, hopefully you get invited to, you know, another GNA event and, or the GNA event that Giselle is throwing. And Kiana is like, girl, I've been to one and it was ghetto. I got hit in the face with a mug. I don't want to go to no GNA event. So then Karen talks about her feelings at the Hattitude party. She felt like it was an inquisition that the girls were being too harsh on her and that they were trying to like steamroll her. But I was like, honestly, girl, you turned that whole entire um, event on to Mia. So was it really an inquisition? And then Karen talking about, you know, I'm looking out for the girls who really going to rock with me, who going to ride with me till the wheels fall off. And I'm looking at Karen is like, nobody should have to support you blindly. Like you should expect your friends to ask you what's up. Because again, sis, it's your second DUI. There are always going to be questions. Oh, the next scene we see is Karen going to Giselle's. So she pulls up to Giselle's house. Giselle's kitchen is horrible. All that white, like no color. She got white counters, white ca cabinets, a white refrigerator. <laughs> Shout out to Nene. Um, she has like a white stove, I like white stove, white microwave. I said, girl, this is too much white. It's too, I, my last apartment, like the counters, everything was white. And it used to piss me off because every time I would like clean, no matter how hard I would clean, it nothing, like it would look like everything was dirty again, like the next day. And that used to irritate me. So like, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. So Karen comes in, Giselle already being shady, trying to figure out how Karen got to her house. And she's like, I was like, you know, I got a car here, Giselle. So then Giselle was like, so you got a driver? And Karen is like, yeah, if Beyonce can have a driver. I can have one too. And so then Karen, no, Giselle is like, well, didn't you have one blue eyes? And then Karen kind of makes a face like, well, not no more. And they do the flashback when Cherise brought up, like, girl, the streets say you be around town with that man named Blue Eyes. And Giselle said under her breath, her driver. Now, what I, this is kind of like my theory is, and it's this kind of messy. What if Blue Eyes was always picking Karen up? 
you know, because he was her driver. So if Karen was having, you know, a night about the town where she was getting lifted in three sheets to the wind, that man was always there to like come and get her. And now that they not cool no more if they broke up, you know, because the streets said they was together allegedly, but we, we, we probably, they probably wasn't, but you know, I'm just saying like he's gone or she fired him. Now this happened. That's crazy. If that's true, it's crazy. If that's true. So then Giselle asks Karen, how did you feel about the Hattitude party? And just Karen says she felt like it was an inquisition. And she also didn't like the fact that um, Giselle made the shady dig about the Lajam, the non-alcoholic drink. She was like, Giselle is always shady. They bring up when she wore the T-shirt about like free Uncle Ben when he has tax issues. And then when they got into that argument when they were like in Paris and stuff. And so Karen just feels like Giselle was being shady on purpose. And I low-key feel like that's why Karen did what she did with the... Um, with the event situation, I think she wanted to stick it to Giselle because she felt like Giselle did that party for her birthday to like embarrass her and to get digs at her. Because I'm just, I'm kind of confused how Karen thinks this was an inquisition when I feel like no one was really pressing you or coming at your throat, but Karen felt like the girls was coming at her. And so Giselle was like, no, that's not what the, like what it was. She said, you know, what I was surprised was that Jacqueline had a lot to say and she didn't say anything to you when you weren't there. So then Karen, Karen was like, well, Jacqueline's on timeout because Jacqueline made a comment about we going to wait out, wait until the verdict. And I'm like, well, Karen, that's her right. Now, do I really see it for Jacqueline? No, but I can't fault the girl to be like, we can't really cash judgment until we get a verdict as to what went on. And it's crazy that Karen just expects everyone to have like this blind loyalty to her because no one has to do that for you, ma'am. Like they don't have to be that way with you. So then um Giselle is like I'm I, but I what I am surprised is that Giselle didn't tell Karen about um Jacqueline saying that she called her drunk or tipsy I'm surprised she didn't tell her that so she's just um Karen brings up that she told Kiana about you know her not being invited to the event and it hurt her feelings and Giselle was like it wasn't done on purpose which I kind of feel like it was and it wasn't if it was true that Kiana wasn't full time or even a part of the show around that time then it wasn't done on purpose but if it is true that Kiana was a friend and she wasn't invited it feels like Giselle probably didn't invite her to like you know, be nice to Ashley because Ashley and Kiana still got issues uh, because of what happened at their last GNA event. But Giselle was like, she ain't got no beef with Kiana. She cool with Kiana. She cool with Kay. So um, they keep talking. Them cookies look good, though, that Giselle was, you know, Karen said Giselle can bake. I don't know why Giselle didn't just start selling cookies or start a brand like a cookbook brand like, you know, Teresa or sell food like Bethany because the makeup was a fool and so was them like eyelashes. You probably would have made more money hawking cookies because the cookies look great. So... Um, Giselle brings up her GNA event that she wants to, that she invited all the ladies to what we saw last episode is to honor her father. We found out that when her father was diagnosed with the brain tumor, he ended up dying 12 days later after getting a CAT scan. And so the GNA event is going to be like a foundation, like there to like host the national brain tumor society and help fundraise. And they now want to make GNA like a wellness brand instead of an at leisure wear line, which didn't make sense in the beginning because none of the outfits y'all had on that runway looked nice they all look like they would give you a yeast infection if you were working out at the gym with it on just look hot and uncomfortable so this is probably the best move for them so um what's her name Karen was like, oh, that's great. What can I do to support you since this is an event that's in honor of your father? And Giselle was like, just come and like show your support. So then Karen lets us know that she has an event as well during that time for the Fem Power event. And it's like from six to nine. And I think Giselle's event was like from 7.30 to nine the same day. And so Karen is like, oh, it's in the morning. And Giselle's like, what time is it? She was like, I don't really know. I'm like, how you not know at an, uh, know what time you're being given an award? That doesn't make sense. So then Giselle says in her confessional that Karen's name was not on that event flyer that she got when she got invited to the event three months ago. She feels like maybe a couple of people said they couldn't come and then Karen decided, A, put my name on the event. I think that might be possibly true because Karen is trying to make herself look like she is a community leader, a pillar of the community. That would definitely help her in her case against with this whole DUI situation. So... I was like, yeah, Karen, 
Yeah, I don't know, girl. I, 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 I just don't know. So it's the next day. We leave that event, and Giselle got an attitude. And she's rightfully so to be pissed. So it's 6 a.m. in the morning, and Giselle's like, why am I getting a text from Karen? And so when we look at the text, it basically, um, to summarize the text, Karen pretty much is inviting everybody to her event, to the Fem Power event, the day of. They're getting transportation. It's being provided by Jazzy. And they want everybody, Karen is saying everybody should come to both events. Karen says, in her confessional it's not my fault that like I'm having an event and I want everyone to be a part of my event as well so like the girls can go to both Giselle sends back in the group chat no need for the ladies to be running all over town please everybody go to Karen's event so Giselle off rip is telling the girls don't come to my event if you're gonna try to go to both events the ladies feel like Karen is putting them in a very like compromising place because it's like they all RSVP to go to Giselle's event but now they want to support Karen as she is receiving this award and they're just like Stacy is like I wouldn't have done something like this but I'm not Karen Huger. Mia said Karen just likes the attention. That's why she did this. And that's just what it is. So we then see Giselle at her event. We also see her meeting with the people who are part of the National Brain Society, National Brain Tumor Society. You see Ashley pull up because she's the A and G and A. She asks um, Giselle how she's feeling. Giselle feels some type of way because she was like, why is Karen doing this? And so Ashley, with her bulbous head, makes a point where she's like, Karen always talks about how much her parents meant to her and how she, all she wanted is for the ladies to support her and, like, be there for her. So the fact that she's not here doing this with Giselle or did this, like, making the ladies choose which event to go to says a lot about Karen and it kind of makes me look at her sideways. And I, I, I actually agree with Ashley. Like you do, Karen does go on and on about how much she loves and cares about her family and how much she, it means to her that she has lost her parents. That it's like, you now have Giselle who's lost her dad. Why not try to support her? But then on the other end, I understand what other people have been saying about, well, remember how Giselle treated Karen when she was going through the death of both of her parents? And it's like, yeah, dang, you know, like it, it's still messed up in the sense of like, if the ladies had already known about Giselle's event months in advance then Karen you you are wrong for inviting them the day of to come to your event knowing good and well that Giselle's event was already on the books that's not proper etiquette and you are the etiquette etiquette queen when season one of our HOP happened you gave Giselle an etiquette book and this is not this is this is this is not it girl so we see um, Wendy, Stacy, Mia, and Kiarna, and Jazzy in Jazzy Sprinter. We also meet her um, driver. I think it was Fami. I think that's how you say his name. And so they're on their way to Karen's event. And like Stacy is very much like, y'all, we have to be cognizant of the time and we have to make sure we support both ladies. Karen says it was important for her to be honored at this event, especially with all the negative press that's coming out about her, about her character, about the DUI. And it's like this stuff, when it came out, if you didn't get behind the wheel and drive drunk, ma'am. So you got to take, take, take ownership and accountability of that. We see some footage of Karen at the event. We then go back to uh, Giselle's event and we see that Vivian, Karen, Fan, friend shows up and showed us Jacqueline and um Giselle's kind of shocked that Vivian is there because she expected her to be there with Jack not not Jacqueline but with um at Karen's event where Vivian is like well I RSVP to this so I you know I'm going to the place where I RSVP the first instead of the place where I was asked to come on the day of which I don't, I don't fault Miss Vivian okay and then Jacqueline I don't get why you know she's just there you know, I feel like if me are not there, why Jacqueline there? But hey, it is what it is. Jacqueline say, I'm going to get my check, so I'm going to show up. We then go back to the girls in the Sprinter, and they're just all talking about the Twitter, not Twitter, but the um, exchange between Giselle and Karen in the group chat and how awkward it was. And everyone's like, yeah, it was crazy. So then I think we see them call Ashley. They call Ashley. Jazzy is like, okay, so we're trying to figure out how to be cognizant of the time. So Jazzy is like, we're going to um, Karen's event first, and then we're coming to this event. What if we get there around 8.30ish? And then Ashley's like, girl, no, the party is over by 9 p.m., like, y'all need to at least try to be here by 8 o'clock. And so they're like, okay, okay, we'll try, we'll try. So they get to Karen's event, or I think around like 7, 10, 
like set yeah like 710 and you know while they're there uh Wendy ends up making a comment like you know what y'all should just text them and say y'all not coming because they end up asking Fami the driver like bro how long is it like between both places and he said 24 minutes and Wendy was like DC track I said yeah girl DC traffic y'all better off getting in the metro and walking to your destination than getting on the, like driving in this sprinter like y'all are gonna be late I would be, I wouldn't have even went. Honestly, I, if I were in this predicament, I would have went to Giselle's event first because that is where I RSVP'd first. And if the event started at seven, then I would have left at like eight and then went to Karen's event and, you know, hugged on her, loved on her and then left. And we're not going to act like people don't be double booked for events. So I do feel like Giselle was doing a little bit too much, but I do understand like the severity of her being like, this was supposed to honor my Nancy father. Ashley telling Giselle about the conversation she had with the ladies about trying to get to the party by eight o'clock. And Giselle was like, I don't like, uh, I don't want them to come. I don't want them to come. Uh, she said, I told them to try to be here by seven 30, eight o'clock. And Giselle was like, Ashley, that's effing rude. That is effing rude. And Ashley's like, I know, but they want to come and support you. She she was like, tell them not to come. And I looked at, I was looking at Giselle, like, if you do not want them to come, then text them and tell them to stay at Karen's place. But you didn't do that because you actually wanted them to come and support you. So like you doing all of this, but there was ways for you to make it clear and make it plain that you did not want them there. So you were okay with Ashley telling them to get there at eight o'clock. Okay. So um we see the girls in the sprinter they pull up to karen's place it's like um event it's like seven like ten seven oh nine they run in there they take pictures with karen it looks like production couldn't even get in there because the footage looked like it was on a camera phone or an iphone so all the girls were taking pictures with karen wendy and kiana choose to stay with karen kiana's like girl i went to a gna event got my face bashed in i don't need to go to that and wendy is like i came here to watch karen get her uh award do i know what it's for no but yeah, I didn't expect Wendy or Kiana to go to Giselle's event. Wendy and Giselle just now kind of got somewhat okay. And Kiana not cool with neither one of them, Giselle or Ashley. So I didn't expect them to go and support or anything like that. So then we end up seeing Jazzy, Stacy, and Mia power back into the Sprinter and get on the road to head to Giselle's event. So while they're on the road, we end up seeing um, Vivian, Jacqueline, Ashley, and... Um, Giselle have a conversation and uh, Giselle tells Jacqueline about how Karen is really upset with you. She pissed at you. And then Ashley's like, for what? Cause what Jacqueline said wasn't that deep about the, like, you know, she was like, she didn't like the fact that you said we got to wait till the verdict comes out. And Jacqueline kind of had a face like she didn't say that. But then Ashley was like, no, yeah, you did say that. But it wasn't that bad that you said that. And Jacqueline was like, well, I was just being honest. And again, I don't think Karen should expect blind loyalty to, from these people. Like, girl, you this your second DUI. People are allowed to judge and look at you a little differently, ma'am. So Jacqueline's like, she don't really care. Like, she's not pressed by what, what was said. So we then see Giselle and... Um, Ashley give a speech about their event. We actually see the people who are a part of the National um, Brain Tumor Society come up, and they also give a speech about it. Uh, Giselle explains about, again, what happened to her father, about them finding the brain tumor and him, unfortunately, passing away after 12 years. And the Brain Tumor Society lady speaks about how they feel like they're close getting to, like, a cure or a better system of detecting these types of tumors. So the ladies finally pull up. It's, like, 8.04 or 8.03. So they got there right around eight o'clock so they run up in there and they're excited they're like yeah we got here like let's go in and support they walk in immediately Giselle sees them she was like taking a picture with somebody and she said uh-uh 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 no ladies y'all got to go y'all got to go Stacy was like what Jazzy was like are you serious and Mia was laughing like are you like for real and then you see Ashley like oh like running across the room being like no like like trying to be like oh no no like trying to tell Giselle like they well they're here they're here but Giselle was like no she ended up like calling security and honestly this is Ashley's fault and Giselle's fault because Giselle if you really didn't want them there you should have texted them and told them hey don't come because Ashley had these women thinking that okay she is the A and G and A we get there at eight o'clock y'all told them if we're here by eight o'clock to still come they got there at like 804 803 what are you talking about sis 
Like, why are you kicking them out? And to me, I felt like Giselle was the one that made this more than what it needed to be at this point. Because do I think she is totally justified in being frustrated and angry and upset? Yes. Yes, they are RSVP for your event first. And they got a last minute invitation to Karen's event and everybody chose to go to to Karen's event. So she is totally justified in feeling disrespected and discarded by the group. But I'm also like, if you wanted people to remember this event as something peaceful and positive for your father or in remembrance of him, you would not have made this big scene by kicking these women out and having your security come over there to take them outside. <laughs> like, girl, what? Was it good TV? Yes, but it was just like, you contradicted yourself to me. But I also feel like this is the perfect example of like, this is why sometimes you have to be a likable person. Like if you're not likable, people don't care about etiquette when it comes to you or care about you being right or, or, or wronged or being harmed. Because honestly, the women should have went to Giselle's event first and then Karen's, but they all like Karen. People don't really like Giselle. So nobody really felt in like inclined to really have to be at her event. And I think that's a lesson she had to learn from this. When you are a bitch to people, people don't have to like you. They don't have to be nice to you. If your behavior denotes that type of energy, Energy, they don't have to be around you and I mean it sucks but it is what it is and I think what hurt Giselle the most is she realized that like oh these people don't really rock with me like that the only person I got is Ashley and that's true yeah, y'all that is it that is all and as always remember to be bravely authentic and definitely hop down in these comments below and share your thoughts with me and I'm out y'all deuces Bye.